Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 12th District. I am Kerry Condotta for NCW Life TV. Well, what a week in politics. You've had debates at the federal level and, of course, the uh, cutoff in the House at the local level, a revenue report that's off the charts. Budgets are right around the corner. There is a lot happening. We're going to try to get to all of it in this half an hour. We'll be talking to your legislators, Mike and Keith, and we'll be reviewing that budget increase, those budgets next week. But right now, that revenue forecast is the key, and it is tremendous. It is huge. And so we'll discuss that shortly. And uh, we look forward to bringing you all the news over the next few weeks as things unfold in the final days and weeks of this session. We'll be right back with some updates on the revenue forecast and what was flying and what was dying at cutoff in this year's session. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick look at business news, and I mean really quick because there's so much in politics this week. Of course, we'll have your legislators with us just shortly, but uh, we are going to review some of the bills that uh, didn't make it and did make it in certain categories in just a moment. We'll talk about the revenue report. We'll talk about property taxes. We're going to squeeze that all in in the next few minutes. But first, in terms of business, our big company, Boeing, again, facing trouble with the 737, now finding some debris in some of the gas tanks and other issues. Uh, this is not looking good. How However, uh, the other thing that's facing them is they've lost a, uh, it's not uh, exactly a lawsuit, but an agreement with the European Union came through that essentially says they cannot keep their lower tax rate, that they're being subsidized by the government. So therefore, Boeing is going to have to give up its 0.2954 B&O tax rate, which is substantially lower than normal for manufacturing, and go back to a regular B&O tax. Now, I'll tell you in a few minutes how that affects their revenue report moving forward. All right, on bills, the big bill that uh, did get out of the House is the sex ed bill down to kindergarten. This would teach kindergartners a number of things that most people don't think are appropriate. And that certainly was the case for the hearing that was had. After it passed out of the Senate, it came to the House. 600 plus, almost 700 people showed up in opposition to this bill. Uh, that bill continues to move, even though there is amazing uh, opposition in every corner of this state, even in the King County area. But uh, for some reason, agenda-driven, it just keeps moving. Let's hope it doesn't go any further than that House committee. Uh, there are uh, a number of 2A wins, Second Amendment winners, actually, uh, in terms of not passing. Uh, the assault weapons ban, as you know, did not get out of either house. The large magazine bill did not get out of either house. Uh, a, uh, another one, uh, Senate Bill 6294, that was expected to come out did not, requiring mandatory training for concealed uh, permits. Uh, that did not come out. And so uh, the uh, two Second Amendment folks that support that have done uh, very well. However, I would caution that what I expect is to see an initiative on all those issues put together similar to 1639 and launched probably sometime in the next 30 to 60 days. Uh, they did get a few things on the Second Amendment. Centralized background checks were supported by both sides. Uh, the uh, protection for 60-year-olds, for um, gun protection for 60-year-olds uh, did pass, and a removal of gun rights for individuals con convicted of unlawful firing or animal cruelty. I'm not sure exactly the details on that bill. All right, housing-wise, let's look at what did uh, pass. The changing zoning to allow... Uh, uh, single or multiple family homes or uh, tiny homes or any of these other small uh, mother-in-law apartments on single family uh, zoning. It looks like it's moving. Uh, that was a last minute bill. There's a bigger bill that, that basically bans single family housing zoning, which is just ridiculous. But that bill looks like that may stall. But the bill that allows more uh, of these uh, mother-in-law apartments and tiny homes and other things on single family housing and the problem with this bill is, is it doesn't allow local control for most uh, reasons. It just basically says you can do this. So once again, the state is weighing in on local issues and should not be doing that. Uh, miscellaneous, uh, a felon voting rights, very controversial bill that would allow felons to get their voting rights back before they finish their sentences. Yes, believe it or not, it uh, looks like it has failed. 
a big gambling bill to allow sports gambling uh, is is still alive, but it's having some controversy because it's only for the tribes. So the tribes would get to do sports gambling in their casinos. A lot of the private uh, card rooms and lounges here in the state would like to do that as well. They'd like to have the same opportunity. And of course, that would bring a lot of money into the state where the tribal bill really doesn't bring a lot of money into state coffers. Uh, banning flavored vaping is still floating around out there. There's a number of different uh, versions of that, but the uh, ban on it uh, has elapsed. Uh, the, of course, there was an executive order from uh, Governor Inslee to ban flavored uh, vaping, and that has expired. So it's back on the market until this other bill may or may not pass. Uh, environmental bills that are still alive. We have the statewide bill on single-use plastic bags still alive. Looks like it's continuing to move. That would eliminate uh, single-use plastic bags from supermarkets and create a charge for any bags that would replace. You'd have to pay for the bags if you don't bring your own. Let's see, updating carbon reduction goals for Washington State. Uh, this one has some long-term effects, which would be basically stating what our carbon output should be between now and say 2050 that they're trying to update. The one that you've been concerned about, the clean uh, fuel standards bill, which would add about uh, anywhere from seven to 21 cents to the price of a gallon of gas is in limbo. It's still alive, but it is not looking like it's going to move too much further forward. And here's one that came out of nowhere in the last uh, week or so, a ban on bottled water tapping into any new sources. In other words, if, if you're a bottled water manufacturer and you have a source right now, you're fine. But uh, the concern is that bottled water is tapping into new resources that should be used for other things. At least that's the theory. And so a bit, it is possible that a bill will be passed to not allow any further bottling of bottled water from any new sources. All right. The big news of the week was the $600 million uh, increase in the revenue package. Yes, the revenue reports out $600 million increase for this period, $1.1 billion over the next two years, leaving a $4.1 billion surplus currently in the state budget. Uh, this is going to be interesting next week because we'll see how much of that money they use in these new budgets. As you will hear shortly from your legislators, uh, they are uh, dropping those budgets next week. So it is uh, kind of interesting that at about the same time all that's happening, and by the way, part of that increase was from the death of Paul Allen, of all things. The estate tax on Paul Allen was huge. That was the positive. The negative side is Boeing hasn't delivered any airplanes. They've got 400 airplanes sitting on the tarmac. And the combination, this is where I want to bring back what I started earlier, the combination of the tax increase on Boeing, which is coming, they've decided to raise the tax on Boeing, and the fact those planes may be delivered, could be a huge additional increase in the revenue forecast late this year or next year for the next budget. We are looking now at a budget in the next few years of over $56 billion. So. We'll see next week how much of that they spend, how much they save, and if you're going to get anything back in $30 tabs or property taxes, which I think you should, I seriously doubt we'll see that, but that's what we'll be looking for next week when the budgets drop. All right, we'll be right back to wrap it up. Actually, we'll be right back with your state legislators first. <laughs> we want to talk to Mike and Keith. I missed them last week, forgot they were going to be here. But they are here, and we're going to talk about what's going on in a big week in Olympia, and then we'll come back and wrap it up after that. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Well, what a week in Olympia with cutoffs and revenue reports and budgets about to fly next week. It has been very exciting. We missed out on our two state reps last week because they were busy on the floor passing all those hundreds of bills out of the thousands that were dropped. Quite a, quite a time uh, these folks have had in there. We're glad to have them back today. Keith and Mike, welcome aboard. Uh, hope you got a little sleep last night. You've been uh, working some late nights and some long days. Tell us a little bit about what's, uh, what's going on now. Yeah, well, we're certainly glad that uh, that cutoff did occur last night, just before 5 o'clock, uh, because as you say, Carrie, we've been working around the clock over here, um, 14, 15 hour days into the late, late evenings to try and pass uh, these bills. Um, uh, just the volume, as you mentioned, was pretty incredible for a short session. Um, I hadn't seen anything like it, and uh, it was, we sort of jumped around for the last four days on, you know, we'd, we'd caucus on a set of bills, and then we'd come out and run completely different bills, and then go back and caucus, you know, it, so it was really disjointed, and there was a lot of, you know, kind of 
start and stop, start and stop, and uh, that made it very challenging um, to kind of keep track of everything. Uh, but we did end up, you know, seeing some pretty bad bills uh, that we were concerned about not make it through the process. It was really somewhat unpredictable also because the way the timing was such that, uh, you know, as Mike said, we you had so many bills coming at us, but then we'd have long periods of time where there's nothing going on. And in fact, we ended up last night, uh, we didn't even go till five o'clock. You know, typically you have to drop that bill at 4.59 and, you know, go past, but we were done by 4.30. So to me, that was an indicator that a lot of the bills that they, there were plenty of bills that they still could have run, but they were really not sure exactly what, what they wanted to run. Yeah, we ended up running bills like the, the state gem and the state dinosaur and state micro clam. animal and state clam, yeah. <laughs> well, I had to tell you, I was over there Friday and uh, <laughs> talking to J.T. Wilcox. He said that he thought this new speaker was a little overwhelmed, that she was probably having her issues trying to balance all this. And also, I noticed when I was up at the galleries watching the floor that Frank Chop is definitely still active. He was running around with folders and talking to members, and JT gave me the impression that he hasn't backed out all the way. So it sounds like they've got some uh, organizational issues on that side. Well, last year we were told that Frank hadn't actually ever had a piece of legislation until that uh, final bill that he had with uh, the UW uh, uh, hospital there. but. Uh, he's been very active. His name has been on a number of pieces of legislation, and you're right. I mean, he's been brokering deals and, and trying to make things happen. I think, one of, to me, one of the encouraging things, too, is that a lot of the, the big uh, those soundbite bills that, that are often talked about, they, they didn't come before us. And I think they, they realize that, you know, they are, they really do need a lot more discussion, a lot more uh, digging down to the details of what this will mean. You know, if you pass certain things and, and you expect certain uh, outcomes, I mean, have we really thought this through? And I, and I think that that's probably testament to the fact that when we've had numerous amendments trying to refine some of these bills that uh, we don't see some others actually come to the floor. Well, one that did get through was the uh, very controversial sex ed bill. It takes it clear down to kindergarten. I understand there was a hearing today that uh, over 700 people showed up, and most of them against the bill. Is that, uh, was that your committee, Mike? That's my committee. That's correct. Uh, we had uh, 675 people sign in to, uh, to testify and oppose the bill. Uh, we made it through about 15 different panels, which, as you're aware, Carrie, that's a pretty big feat. Uh, in a short amount of time, in a two-hour time span. So we were moving people through. Uh, I thought the opponents of the bill um, articulated their positions pretty well. It's going to be a, a hard-fought thing from here on out. I mean, they're still here on campus visiting members' offices, um, trying to uh, share concerns. Uh, overwhelmingly, I think the message, though, that came out of this morning's hearing was the fact that they, they're, you know, it's too much too soon uh, for a lot of our kids. And I think that, you know, if we hit the pause button and sort of just take a step back, <clears throat> And think about what we're actually trying to accomplish in those those lower grades. Um, you know, it, it doesn't really need to include um, some of the things that that people are bringing up and some of the things that this bill would prescribe through standards. Uh, so I think there is a lot of reasons to be a little bit uh, to be extremely nervous. Uh, you know, when you're um, trying to uh, uh, talk through some of this very sensitive information. Well, I tell you, in another area that I was just kind of surprised at. Well, maybe not because I think I know what's coming, but. On the Second Amendment bills, the gun control bills, both the assault weapon bill and the magazine bans have failed, and a number of other gun bills have failed. Uh, how do you read that? I mean, was there just enough pressure from the Second Amendment supporters, or did they just think politically it was too dangerous? It's hard to say. You know, they, they uh, unlike uh, when Speaker Chop was uh, in control, um, they've let a lot of their members sort of uh, off. You know, they're voting with us quite a few times. Um, which was, as you remember, Carrie, that's a little bit unheard of. You know, when, when Chop would bring a bill uh, to the floor, he had every <clears throat> member of his caucus locked up and ready to vote uh, however he told him to. So uh, that was, that's been interesting. So I think there is a little bit of, you know, trying to get a new sense of the lay of the land and who's politically vulnerable and who isn't. And, um, you know, I, I always say back home in district, you know, that, that for folks that are concerned about how uh, Second Amendments and, and gun laws are being passed around here, if you want to see uh, gun control and, and stricter, and stricter uh, gun safety laws, turn to the Democrats. They're in charge. They're in charge of both chambers. Um, but you can see that they didn't have the political will uh, this year to, to do it. They talk about it all the time as their top priority and then don't ha then have all the authority to pass bills and don't do it. 
Well, I suspect that we're going to see an initiative. Uh, it polls pretty well, and I bet that's what they figured they could dodge the bullet by running an initiative and not take the political hit. Keith, uh, environmental bills, there was a lot of concern out here with low-carbon low fuel and some other things. Anything in the environmental side come through that you're concerned about? Well, we just heard uh, Bill today on the clean car, uh, California clean car standards and uh, zero emissions vehicles. So, I mean, that, that is an environment right now. Uh, I'm not sure we, actually we voted on that today. It came out on party lines, but it's because we really don't, uh, we don't have all the, you know, the information that we would have liked to have had before we made a recommendation, but uh, that will be, you know, have some impact. But uh, other than that, uh, I, I haven't seen any other on a, our uh, public hearing list yet that uh, I know exactly what's come over. You guys are now looking at a revenue report that is pretty substantial, $600 million coming in in this period and another uh, 500 or so million in the next. It looks like about $4 billion in reserves. Uh, what do you think is going to happen with the budgets uh, next week? It'll be very interesting. So the, um, the Senate's already re released their capital, uh, capital budget. They released that last night to the public. Uh, very interesting process there. They had to go through a procedural uh, the House was actually supposed to be first, uh, but they claimed that they had some procedural issues, so they released their budget first. And so we're, we're pouring through that right now to see what that looks like. Um, you know, the, the revenue forecast has very little influence on the capital budget, but of course it does have a tremendous amount of influence on the general fund and operating budget, budget through appropriations. Uh, we'll, we will hear uh, the, the uh, general fund budget Monday or Tuesday. It'll be introduced, and then we'll spend the rest of that week and the weekend uh, going through the provi provisos and um, proviso language to see what is included and what isn't included uh, with public testimony, everything through the weekend in appropriations. You know, to have that kind of money and that such a positive revenue forecast, uh, I, I would hope to see that we, we do some things that we have been talking about for a very long time as far as priority. Um, retirement colas, you know, I know, Carrie, you and I have worked on that for a long time. I say we fund those things. We've got no excuses. Um, I say we look at uh, Medicaid reimbursement rates. We fund those things. We've got no excuses. Um, and then from there, we give some money back to the taxpayers. I think that's a really important thing. you got a surplus like this. You should be giving some money back to the folks that have been hit hardest back home. Our lowest income, our moderate income folks, our middle class, uh, they have seen, and our small businesses, of course, Carrie, have seen, have seen no tax relief in years. And I think it's time we do something about that. Well, I got to tell you, folks, with the property tax uh, statements coming out, it's an outrage across the state. Not so bad here in Chelan, Douglas, and Grant County, but in other places, it's 23, 27, 33 percent increases, huge property tax increases. And man, people are really upset. Keith, uh, what do you think? Is there any appetite for any kind of a tax break over there? Well, there obviously is on our side, and, and I'd like to think that we would, you know, get a good hard look at that. But I think that probably more, to me, more importantly, is making sure that the commitments that we've made, like, you know, Mike has mentioned with the Medicaid rates and, and those retirement COLAs that, that we've always promised that would be there, you know, take care of the people that need, are the most uh, vulnerable right now. And for those providers and those uh, in the health, particularly in the healthcare industry, uh, we've got a lot of caregivers that are looking at, you know, Medicaid reimbursement rates that haven't uh, increased, and they're basically falling behind. And, and yet we've created new programs, we've created new uh, opportunities for people to get money from, from the government. And it's, it's time that we take care of the ones that we've committed to before we move on to new things. So it's a great opportunity for us to really kind of scale some things back and actually have some money set aside for to make sure that our rainy day fund is is really there for a rainy day. Well, the rainy day fund looks pretty solid right now, gentlemen. But uh, let's uh, we do have one bill that looks kind of promising on thirty dollar tabs that uh, was released, and uh, looks like everyone in your caucus signed on. It has to do with reallocating some general fund money to backfill the projects and honor the thirty dollar tabs. At the same time, it does some other things on sales tax for feminine hygiene products and other other things, but uh, is this thing got a chance at all of being looked at? Uh, you're in transportation. Keith, what do you think? Well, we might, I, I guess we probably won't look at it. I mean, I, I would like to think that we would. Uh, I'll be surprised, quite honestly, if it actually gets there just because of who, uh, you know, gives the hearings and all and, and what, what it really brings up. I mean, the more uh, airtime that that gets, the more pressure, you know, will be put on certain individuals. So, uh, you know, 
I would be surprised, but I'd sure be, you know, very uh, pleasantly surprised if we do see it. <laughs> what do you think, Mike? Thirty dollar tabs or not? What are you betting on? Uh, I, I sure hope so. I mean, you, what you saw in that bill that we dropped yesterday, and you're right, the whole caucus signed on to it. It really is a priority of government. You know, we that was a bill that represented where we thought the money should be spent. Uh, everything, as you mentioned, from the thirty dollar car tabs, ensuring that's the reality because that's what the voters want. Uh, ensuring that we uh, help with feminine hygiene, hygiene products by taking away sales tax on those things that, that folks depend on and need. You saw yesterday floor action uh, uh, from us, the Republican-sponsored bill capping the cost of insulin. I mean, you're starting to see where we want to go uh, with some of these things and where, we are, where we're trying to do work in helping uh, the, the lowest, uh, the most vulnerable uh, folks in our state, trying to help them, give them a hand up and get them out. Uh, on the right foot so they can they can achieve uh, all that they want to and, and the American dream alongside it. Well, I hate to say we're running out of time, gentlemen, but we are. Next week, the budgets come from the House, the Senate. It's going to be exciting next Thursday to hear from you on those budgets and see what they, just how much they spent is what I would say. I suspect they'll spend as much as they can. Uh, so we'll talk about that next week. Anything left to wrap up this week before we move to the big budget cycle next week? Uh, just a reminder that we'll be hosting a Teletown Hall uh, coming up. Uh, here in the next week, and I uh, want to invite folks to uh, to jump on that call, and you should all have received information uh, in our our newsletter updates, uh, as well as press releases across the across the district. So we're looking forward to talking with people next Monday or Tuesday night, rather. That's a great format. Go ahead, Keith. Uh, do I have anything else to add? Okay. Well, I guess let, Gill Town Halls are a great format, folks. You can get involved, and in, like you said, the information's out there. And that, uh, that about wraps it up for this week. Thank you, gentlemen, for taking the time. Sorry we missed you last week, but I understand what was going on. Hopefully next week we'll get the uh, front row seats on the budget here. That's what we're going to be looking for. So have a good uh, week. Get a little uh, sleep because this thing is far from over with. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> All right. We'll uh, be right back to wrap it up. Welcome back. Well, there you have it, direct from Olympia. The big budgets drop next week. That is going to be the story of the whole session. How much more money will these guys spend? Based on inflation and population, the budget should be around 40 to 41 billion dollars. It is sitting at 52.5 billion dollars and looks like it's moving to potentially 54 billion dollars even before we get to the next budget. Meanwhile, you're getting your property tax statements in the mail and folks aren't happy across this state with huge property tax increases. Not so bad here in the 12th district, but any little dollar on property taxes hurts everybody from business to uh, especially folks on fixed income. So we'll be tracking the property tax issue. We'll be hoping that there's some relief. I don't expect to see it out of the legislature, but We'll see about that $30 tabs bill. A lot of pressure from the folks to get what they voted for three times. You just never know what's going to happen in Olympia. You'll hear about it here first. You'll see it all next week when the budgets hit the ground. This is Kerry Condotta for the 12th District. This is NCW Life Channel. Don't forget our news at 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. And, of course, you can always find these episodes online at ncwlife.com on demand. Any episode you want to see, make sure you stay up to date with Olympia especially with what's going on now. We'll see you next week.